in Sydney, Australia, where authorities say three people, including a gunman, were killed after a 16-hour hostage situation at a downtown cafe. Five other people, four hostages and a police officer, were injured. NBC's Sarah James reports from Sydney. They're in. After more than 16 hours, the siege ended in violence. Heavily armed police stormed the cafe using what appeared to be stun grenades after hearing gunfire inside. As paramedics raced to the scene, stretchers ready. They made the call because they believed that at that time, if they didn't enter, there would have been many more lives lost. It all began during morning rush hour. At 9.45, police are called to the Lint Chocolate Cafe in downtown Sydney, the busy heart of the business district in Australia's biggest city. 17 hostages inside. They're forced to hold up a flag showing the Islamic Declaration of Faith written in Arabic. One after another, hostages stand in the window at gunpoint, some for hours. Others later post the gunman's demands on social media. He wants an ISIS flag and to talk to the Australian Prime Minister. As the news spreads, air traffic over Sydney is diverted. There are evacuations. The Sydney Opera House, the U.S. Consulate, which issues an emergency warning to Americans. And directly across from the cafe, the Channel 7 newsroom, where a police sniper takes up a position. We saw some, uh, some, some chilling scenes as the, um, as the gunman forced these hostages up against the glass window. The gunman is spotted through the window, later identified as Iranian-born man Haran Manis, a self-styled radical sheikh with a history of trouble with the law, who is on bail facing charges of accessory for the murder of his ex-wife. Six hours into the crisis, three hostages somehow escape. At 9 p.m., the cafe lights go out. The police don night vision goggles. Then at 2.08 in the morning, the hostages suddenly run for their lives. Police storm the building. In the shooting, the gunman is killed. So are two hostages, a man and woman both in their 30s. Bloodshed to end a nightmare. That was Sarah James reporting. There will be a mass at St. Mary's Cathedral remembering those who died and all those who were affected by this traumatic event in Sydney.